I've gotten a lot of questions recently where the range selection tool could really help out with different editing techniques people are looking to do. So let's take a look at some tips and tricks that can help you understand this tool a little better. The most common selection mode we see in Cubase is actually the object selection. This is the default tool and this allows you to select a part and it will select the entire part from the beginning to the middle to the end but it doesn't necessarily allow me to work on just a portion of that event. And that's what the range selection is going to allow you to do. So with the range selection tool, we can access it by hitting the number two on your computer keyboard, or we could access it directly from this toolbox directly here in this toolbox or the same tool from this toolbox. And this is going to allow us to do a couple of different things. One quick question I get a lot is like if people want to actually make a MIDI part between the left and right locators, if you actually on a MIDI track, you could double click and create an empty part using the range selection tool. If I wanted to select a range within the audio that's not bound by the beginning and ending of the parts, we can just hold down the left mouse button and drag across. If I wanted to move that range selection to different tracks, use the up and down arrow keys. If I wanted to move it later in time, my right arrow key on my computer keyboard, or earlier in time, my left computer, my left arrow on my computer keyboard. So once we have this done, if I wanted to extend this range selection, I could grab my bottom corner handle here, so with the bottom edge. And we see the cursor turn to two different arrows. And if I want to make it encompass more tracks on top, we could just go to the top edge, the right edge, adjust the length, the left edge, adjust the beginning. So we can think of this as the end position. And we may notice that this could be freely placed, but if I wanted this to snap to the grid, I could just turn snap on or off by hitting the letter J or turning this icon on. And now we could snap directly to the grid. This selection can also be moved by adjusting the parameters here in the info line. So if I wanted to adjust the start, the length, or extend the length, we could do it just like so. These can also be adjusted using the nudge palette. And this is very handy. If you don't have the nudge palette visible, right click and make sure that you have the nudge palette checked because now my selected range, I can come here and move the selected range. I could crop the beginning or extend the beginning earlier or conversely with the end selection range. Now there's some other tips for selecting parts. So I could select multiple parts by just kind of dragging while my left mouse button is down with the range selection tool. If I wanted to deselect a particular range, I could just hold down the command or control key and I could deselect that particular track from my range selection tool. If I wanted to select an entire part from my uh, with my range selection tool, just double click on a range selection tool. And if I say I wanted it to be all in this part until this event ends, hold down shift and double click. If I click here with my range selection tool and now come here and say, hold down shift and double click. I could select that entire range where I could set the kind of the corners of the range selection as well. So the benefits of working with a range selection are some great editing techniques. So one preference to be aware of, if we go to our preferences under editing is where we have cycle follows range selection. So once we activate this, we can see that my left and right locators are kind of encompassing the whole project as we look at it. But now as I adjust my range selection, the left and right locators will automatically follow based directly on my range selection. So some typical range selection editing tips that people do is they come over here and let's say, they wanted to get rid of that portion of the audio, but they don't want to meticulously cut each and every single track. If you come here and you hit the backspace or delete key, we can just get rid of that range of events in time just by doing that. 
So if I wanted to, again, select a range and deselect one part and hit delete or backspace, and this could also be control or command X, we can get rid of that part and the deselected part will stay there. Some other editing functions will undo that, will allow us to kind of do what's often called like a butt edit. So if I want to take these events and we could cut the time. So what I want to do is to hold down control shift or command shift plus X and we'll see these events here move earlier in time. So we'll come here and we'll undo that. So again, we can just delete that amount of space in time. A lot of other functions we could find in our range menu options here or from our range menu directly here. So if I have a range selected, let's say if I just wanted to easily copy that range, hold down the alt or option. And now if I wanted to duplicate that a couple times, we could just treat that as if the events without having to edit or cut the original events can be very handy. Now let's say I wanted to insert silence. I was working on a project and maybe a film score and they inserted a particular scene and we need to add time to the sequence. So here I could go to my edit to range and we'll say insert silence. And for that range selection, we'll now automatically move those events over to the right. If I have a range selection here and I wanted to get rid of the other parts that were not in the range selection, we can go to edit to range and we could say crop. If I wanted to take that selected range and split so I could turn one, like these three events where it's one single contiguous event, I wanted to split without having to grab my scissors tool. Again, go to my range tool and now we just split and these can be processed independently and moved if you want. The range selection tool can also come in handy when using cycle markers. So if I wanted to grab my range selection tool here, I will just add some various cycle markers. So we've added multiple cycle markers. And I oh, see this question a lot where people will copy like their parts, their events on their project window. And if they had tempo changes where those tempo changes weren't necessarily copied in. So there's a couple of methods. One, if you have cycle markers, which is very handy to work with, if you have the range selection tool, you can now select all of the events. So if you copy the events, you often copy the events, but not every event such as tempo information. So if I double click, I could globally select all of the events, including time signature, tempo. And now at this point, if I wanted to copy, hold down my alt key and just drag it over like so. And we again, see that the tempo changes, all my time signature changes are included. So if I wanted to be lazy, and this is handy, especially if you have lots and lots of tracks and you don't want to kind of select and scroll down for a day or two. Another function that's handy is when we come here, I could select a range like so. And let's say if I just select this range that's outside of that particular track, I could right click and under the range, we could choose to do a global copy. And at this point, uh, I could switch to my object selection tool, do a different, uh, choose a location and paste. And this would copy over, again, all of my tempo changes, meter changes, markers, chord tracks, etc. So you can see that kind of working with the range selection tool allows you to deal with your project on a more macro level without having to spend a lot of tedious time having to cut individual parts. And once you kind of get this under your arsenal of workflows, it could really speed up your process and your productions. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.